All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be covering everything you need to know about the day before. Now, I'm aware that some other YouTubers have done videos like this, but they're like 15 minutes long. That's a long ass video, okay? So I'm gonna try and keep this as short as possible while still including as much information as I can. And before we get this show on the road, I would really appreciate if you go down below and give this video a like and you get subscribed so you don't miss my future videos. And without out the way, let's get right into the video. So the day before is an open world MMO survival set in the deadly post-pandemic America, overrun by flesh-hungry, infected, and survivors killing each other for food, weapons, and cars. And you, the main character, wake up alone in a world you no longer remember, set out to find answers and the resources to survive. Now I know for sure this game right here will release on PC, but I'm not for sure whether or not it will release on console. Um, there was some rumors about it releasing on the next generation consoles, the Xbox Series S, X and S, and the PS5, but I haven't heard anything about releasing on previous generation consoles, although I hope it will because not everyone has a next generation console. Now the day before will release on June 21st, 2022 on the platforms that I just mentioned a little bit ago. So now that we got the main stuff out the way, let's go a little bit more in depth and I'm going to talk about first where the game takes place, the vehicles, then the looting, weapon upgrades, and armor, the colonies you can find in the base building. I will go through all of that in this video. First, let's start off with where the game takes place. From the gameplay footage that you're watching in the background, which I should mention, the entire background of this video is all gameplay for the game. IGN released like a 13 minute long video, all just straight up gameplay for the day before. So I use that for the background of this video. But as you can see in the background, we see a big city, which is cool. It's like a more urban area that's been overrun and all that stuff from the uh, infected. And we also see some really beautiful forests that we get to explore using vehicles, which I will talk about vehicles in just a little bit. Now, from what I read, most of the buildings in the cities are totally explorable. You can explore pretty much anything to find resources for survival. You can scavenge through abandoned vehicles, houses, skyscrapers, anything to find resources to survive. Now some more cool things about the exploration side of the game is that you're not going to have like a really intensive and big HUD on your screen. You're going to have to rely more on the sound design of the game to help know when there's enemies around you and where they're coming from, which I like because I think that'll make it more uh, immersive not having as much stuff on your screen so I definitely like that now I looked through a bunch of articles and I couldn't actually find like a name of the town that you're in or city that you're in or just a name of the whole map if there I'm presuming there is I'm, I'm presuming it's out there if you guys know uh, comment down below I'll definitely pin your comment if you happen to know that so yeah now before we move on to talking about the vehicles I would like to talk about the graphics just for a second um, if you're able to turn up the resolution for the video, if you're able to, I know um, you might not have good enough internet, but the graphics for this game look super awesome. And that also has NVIDIA's ray tracing, which I'm not sure if it's ray trace shadows or reflections or if it's both. And I'm also not sure yet if it supports DLSS. Although usually if a game gets RTX um, in it, it usually gets DLSS to go along with it. Now, in terms of vehicles in this game, the vehicle system actually re reminds me a lot of SnowRunner, where there's like big long stretches of mud where you can get stuck and you have to like modulate your throttle so that you don't get stuck. And if you get stuck or you run out of gas or your vehicle breaks, you are in a pretty sticky situation because you are now a prime target for any sort of zombie hordes in, in, in the nearby area or any human survivors out scavenging for resources. Now gas is one thing you definitely need to pay attention to because if you run out of gas, once again, you're a prime target for any sort of zombies in the area and you'll have to leave your vehicle behind to go get gas then come back to your vehicle and then you can continue on with your journey. And same goes for if you damage your vehicle, which I also really like when any sort of developers make it so that you can damage your vehicle because it kind of makes you want to drive sensibly in the game and not want to just bomb around everywhere to get some places as fast as possible. Now as far as what kind of vehicles will actually be in the game, there is one photo that I'll put up on screen right now, it's on their uh, days before official website, and it shows these like, um, I guess, not really jeep looking things. Uh, if you know what a Mercedes G-Wagon is, it looks actually pretty similar to that, or like a Land Rover or something, but there's also this big lifted truck in the background with a big old supercharger sticking out of the hood, which I definitely like that. That looks very cool. So it definitely looks like there'll be a mix of normal looking vehicles and the lifted modded sort of vehicles in the game, which I 
definitely like. Now moving on to looting, weapon upgrades, and armor. So looting is a huge part of the game. It's the way you get any sort of resources resources that you need to survive um, and upgrade your weapons, your armor, and get resources for base building in the future. Now one thing that I found in an article is that they're really trying to make the looting system as realistic as possible, which I really like, which means there isn't going to be any sort of um rarity system for any sort of upgrades or armor that you find all of the different weapon upgrades and armor will do different things one example that they gave is like an armor proof vest will only protect against uh pistol rounds while it won't protect against like ar rounds or sniper rifle rounds and like boots will not do anything in terms of protection which i think is cool because let's be honest one you gonna get shot in the foot you know they're, you, you're, you, they're usually not aiming there, you know what I'm saying? So it's cool that the things that wouldn't really make a big difference in terms of your protection in real life don't in this game. So I think that's pretty cool. Now in terms of weapon upgrades, I haven't really seen much in terms of the upgrades for the weapons, but they did show the short little segment where it showed upgrading your scope and your suppressor. But that's pretty much all that they showed in terms of weapon upgrades. It does look very promising though. I'm really hoping that they can follow through which, with what they've shown. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is finding colonies of survivors. And this is where you can take part in restoring a former society before it is too late. In the survivor colony you can sell your loot and communicate safely with other players. Now this is going to be very cool and I think this is something that's going to really set this game apart from any other zombie uh, pandemic apocalyptic game that's already been released now they didn't elaborate on what kind of loot you can sell like if you can sell your old guns that you don't need or like weapon attachments that you don't need or maybe you got better armor and now you don't need your old armor so you can sell that too i'm not too sure i'm hoping it's going to be like that but not too sure on that now that is about all i know about the colonies they didn't really give too much information on that in the articles that i've read and found now I should mention this game is online, but it also does have an offline version for people that want to only experience the story and main campaign. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is base building, and the reason I'm putting this at the end of the video is because I know the least about it. And pretty much the only thing that they've shown is a short clip of them adding things onto a log cabin. And at your base, I'm presuming you'll be able to sleep, cook food, and just generally relax from the uh, brutal world out there. And as for the actual base building itself, they don't seem to be going for the classic build a hut out of stones and sticks. Um, but it seems that they're going for something more akin to N Nintendo's Animal Crossing, which, hey, I think that's cool. But yeah, overall, I think this game is going to be a really good game, um, considering from what we've seen so far. And I highly recommend that you get subscribed so you don't miss my future videos, because I'm planning on just anything I learn, I'll make a video on it. So just get subscribed for that. And yeah, if you found this video helpful, then hey, go down below and give it a like. It definitely took a really long time to make because <laughs> there was a lot of research involved because there's tons of articles. And speaking of articles, I will link the three articles that I used for all this information in the description down below because they go a little bit more in depth over the entire game. I tried to just cover the main points of it. But yeah, you'll see what I mean when I said there was a lot of research involved if you go check out these articles because <laughs> they are quite long. But yeah, I appreciate you watching to the end of the video and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.